Peace, 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 love, light and healing, peace, love, light and healing, peace to the gods, peace to the earths. Y'all climb on in. Climb on in the building. Yeah, we got some real, real good stuff that we're going to talk about today. Y'all climb on in. I want to talk about viruses. Talk about the viral load. It seems that be that's a lot to talk about today because it's going on everywhere. But I really, really want to give y'all an uh, amazing perspective you know, where these things come from, where these theories come from, and what's really going on and what's really happening in the body. So y'all climb on in. I think this will be very, very good for y'all. Uh, make sure that y'all have y'all actual pens and pads because there's going to be a lot of information. But if you listen to this information with an open mind and an open heart, you know, and just take it all in before you come up with your conclusion, I think that you will be better off and you will have learned so much and it'll be life changing once you listen to this information. Yes. Wow. Back to back. We back to back. I'm going back. I'm, I'm live again tomorrow. <laughs> y'all need some love and attention. Y'all, I've been hearing y'all, so I'm here. So look, once y'all got y'all pens and y'all pads, let me know. Type in some nines and we just going to go and get straight to it and get it started. Uh, we have to truly, truly understand, understand and overstand that, you know, when, when it comes to the allopathic community, when it comes to medicine and it comes to these hospitals and it comes to doctors, that a lot of this stuff is religion based. It's all religious. It all comes from Greek mythology. It all comes from Greco-Roman pagan mythology. A lot of the names that you hear, like for instance, the Achilles tendon, these are talking about Greek gods. When you look at the word arteries that come from a or Aries, this come from other different gods, even names inside of your body, the hippocampus, all this go back to Greek gods, y'all. Even when you get to the gluteus maximus, all this is talking about religious, ancient mythologies of people. So when you just look at the medical terminology and you start going to school and you start learning these things and you start getting these medical books, you start. And if anybody been in any type of philosophy, you will start seeing a connection immediately when it comes to healing the body, when it comes to treatments, when it comes to medicine, when it, medicine, when it comes to pharmaceuticals, when it comes to diagnosing and it comes to religion, folklore it's all the same thing. So this bring me to my point and I do a whole lecture on there. I have over 230 medical terminology words that have a Greek origin that goes back to a Greek God, y'all. And I am not bullcrapping y'all showing you that even when you believe in this type of system and you buy into the allopathic way or the allopathic programming and indoctrination of thinking. Even believing in that, you automatically serving a God subconsciously that you didn't even know you were serving. You know what I'm saying? Even when they diagnose you with these certain words, you are getting you and you are taking it and believing these diagnoses. You are literally subconsciously bowing a knee and worshiping a God that you know nothing about because you're not studying the etymology of these words. And then once you truly start studying the etymologies of these words, family, let me show you what's going to happen. You're going to start understanding where the disease came from, where this whole illusion come from, where this whole theology come from. And then you will be able to break these things apart. And the reason why I'm bringing this up, because I wanted to, to expose the virus theory. So in order for me to do this, I tried to do this on Dame Dash show, uh, but, you know, I wasn't allowed to, to fully, fully express myself. Y'all know me when I like to talk, I like to talk because I like to get down to the foundation, the nuts and the bolts that create something that way you can truly, truly understand, overstand and understand what I'm saying. So I want to tell you all a story. So if y'all ready for this story. Type in some sevens. We're going to talk about the story. Then we're going to get deep into the science. And of course, I'm going to do calls uh, at the end of this live yesterday. I don't know the powers, the, the so-called powers that be. I guess they got to me. I guess they did. I don't know what happened. But if y'all ready for this story, type in some sevens and let's get it. Once I see y'all sevens, we're going to get to it. So today I'm not burning. Uh, today I'm not burning Palo Santo. I'm going to burn me some Californian gray sage. Which is smelling super good up in here. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's get it, y'all. Make sure y'all got y'all pens and y'all pads. Of course, I always got my pen and pad because I'll be learning as I'm teaching because I'm really I really be channeling. So I'll be having to write certain stuff down as well. All right, so back in the day, you know, and this is before the Council of Nicaea. This is for uh this is for 523 AD uh, BC. 
uh, when religion was really first getting uh, being born and created. Uh, and don't quote me on those dates, y'all. Look it up. BCE 5, 520D or BCE, something like that. Y'all look it up. But this is when Pope Constantine and the Council of Nicaea had really formed Christianity, y'all. We're going back before then. Before then, before we heard of pastors, before we heard of, you know, what they call the Kohanim or priests, before we heard of people literally being in certain types of temples, helping facilitate people healings, you had these nomads where people were walking around and they still believed in demons. They believe in evil spirits and they believe that you can catch a spirit and if you caught this evil spirit that it can have a detriment on your body meaning that you can catch a certain type of spirit and it will deteriorate your cells right now check out this terminology so way back when you know, 2000 years ago, it was these people, civilizations of people, and they thought that by thinking wrong and they thought that by, you know, getting into certain types of worships that you can catch an evil entity. And when you caught this evil entity, that it will break down your cells and it will deteriorate your body. Right. And if somebody came in contact with you and touched you, that evil entity or that evil spirit would jump off of you and jump onto the other person. And when that evil entity jump into that other person, person, it will have the same effect on their body, which will break down their cells. They will be delusional. It will make them actually sick in the head or sick in the mind. And when they get this illness, notice these words, when they get this illness, it will break down their body and break down their tissues. Well, it was a certain man that was chosen by God. If this man was chosen by God, he walked upright. And if he was righteous, he had the capability of coming in contact with you. And he can, and this spirit can try to jump on him, but it couldn't jump on him. So he couldn't get ill. He couldn't get sick. He couldn't get possessed. And he had the actual ability to actually rebuke that spirit up out of you and perform an exorcist to get rid of that spirit. And then you was made whole again. Did y'all hear what I just said? So let's just run it back. Because this is all folklore. This happened thousands of years ago, right? Where you can actually get get a demon jumped on you. When that demon jump up on you, it will change your mindset. Not only will it change your mindset, it will make you hate yourself and make you hate others. Not only will it make you hate yourself and hate others, but it will break down and deteriorate your cells. If somebody come in contact with you, this evil demonic spirit will able will be able to jump onto them and literally inhabit their temples or inhabit their bodies and do the same exact things. But it was chosen men that walked around that was strong enough and they faith in God was strong enough that these gem these demons would try to jump on them. But due to their faith, the demons couldn't jump on them and they had the abilities to actually cast or rebuke those demons or those illnesses or sicknesses out of you. Now, let's fast forward it towards the future because this thing started making a lot of traction. They started getting a lot of silver and gold for doing these things. We fast forward it to the, tr uh, to the future. Now we have a priest. All right, I'm going to show you how it came all the way to being a doctor. Now we had, which is the reason why it's called a doctorate. Now we have a priest. A priest is a man that is chosen by God. The Kohanim, he's special, he peculiar, he believe in God, he's faith-based, his belief can change his biology. He His belief is so magnificent and so strong that it's demons that can hop on other people because their faith is weak. When these demons hop on these other people because their faith is weak, if other weak people come around them, guess what happened? The demons hop from one weak person to another weak person, but the priest that had faith in God because his faith was strong, he was able to come and re Buke the actual demons out of you. Now, let's take this from the priest and take it over to the doctors. A doctor. He's been studied up. See that? He's strong in belief of his practice. His immune system is strong. See that? So, Because he's actually practicing what he teach. You, the ordinary person, can get sick. You can catch a cold. This is what they tell you. You can catch a virus. You can catch a bacterial infection because your immune system or what they call faith is weak. But the priest, which is now the doctor that knows it all, and he's actually have some type of stability in his practice and his faith is strong. He have the capability to cure you or to rebuke the evil spirit or sickness or virus out of your body. 
It's the same type of terminology. It went from the Roman Greco uh, uh, Christianities, then it switched over and started going into the priesthood, the Kohanim and Hebrew into other different uh, uh, Abraham uh, religions. Then it backs itself up. And this is where you get your modern day doctors from. That's why all of your diseases or attached to something demonic. If you think I'm playing, Nabi, let me see your phone real quick. If you think I'm playing, let me show you. Have you ever looked up the word sick? Have you ever looked up the word illness? What is the root? What is the root meaning of the word illness? According to NCBI, illness derives from the Middle English adjective ill, which in turn is from the Old Norse term illr, whose origin is, in turn, lost in the mists of time. See that? Now check this out. It says the origins in turn lost in the midst of time. Now, if you go to the etymology dictionary, right? It says illness come from the word disease, sickness, ailment, melody, ill. Earlier meant bad moral quality or it means to be evil. So if you say you have an illness, that means that you are morally or conductively an evil person. Mm. You see that? So, so illnesses or sicknesses, even dis-ease, when you go back and you look at the word dis-ease, it all goes back to a psychological meaning and it means to be bad. It means to be evil. It means to be uh, uh, morally negative. Now, evil people catch what? Evil spirits. Y'all peeping this? So when you actually look at the etymology of these words and you look at the etymology and where all this stuff come from, it is all religious folklore. Now, remember, we went from the modern day man, chosen man, which had his strong faith in God. That strong faith in God is actually the immune system, because if you have strong faith, you have a good immune system and you couldn't catch a demon or you couldn't catch a virus or you couldn't catch a disease. But if you had a weak immune system or if your faith was actually weak and you caught this disease, you caught this illness and you caught this actual virus, you have to have a priest or a doctor to actually cure you or give you an exorcism to get that evil spirit or that virus out of your body. So this got big and all the way up to the medical industry. And now all of a sudden we have this virus theory. Now, when you break it down in a religious way, it makes all the sense in the world, right? But let's break it down in a scientific way and watch how it blow your mind of what this thing really means. So you have to ask yourself, what is a virus? So I need all of y'all to put this in the comment. What is a virus? Yes, an exorcism. An exorcism, there is no difference between faith and an immune system. There is no difference between an evil spirit, a bacteria infection, and a virus. There is no difference between a chosen man of God, a priest, or a doctor. It is all the same meanings when you look up the etymology, and that's why it all works the same way when you tell the story. Because we are still stuck in this illusion, and it's all backed by religion. See that? And then if you look at all the words and the terminologies that make up your body parts or that make up the diagnosis, the diagnosis of your so-called disease, it's all named after Greek and Roman Greco gods. If you think I'm lying, just look this stuff up. Just look it up. Look it up. The hippocampus, the Achilles heel, the cardiac sphincter, the pyloric sphincter. What is a sphincter? A sphincter comes from the word sphinx. What is a sphinx? It was a demigod that governed or actually protected the door. And guess what door it protected? The god of cheeks. What is the god of cheeks that actually protected the hole? What is the sacred hole? Isn't a hole between two butt cheeks? You start really looking this stuff up, man, this stuff will blow your mind. It's all rooted in pedophilia. It's all rooted in pornography. It's all rooted in, in demons and religion and, and false gods and paganism. This stuff is deeply rooted and we're going around saying we got these things. We're going around claiming we got these type of words. We're going around and we don't even know the meaning of half of this stuff. I'm telling you, look, the, if you think I'm lying, start studying these words, y'all. It will blow your mind the things that you allow them to diagnose you with. It will blow your mind the things that you allow them to diagnose you with. So the reason why I'm talking about all of this, because I want to go back to the word virus. What is a virus? When you look up the root word to virus, it just says a poison. It literally just says a poison, right? Where is this poisoning coming from? Now, I want to take you through the science. So the body, 
The body is made of 150 trillion cells, family. Let's write this down. The body is made of 150 trillion cells. Each of these cells have something you call organelles. Organelles act as organs. So when you look at your body, you have these macro organs in your body, like the liver. The liver is an organ. It does amazing things inside the body. The respiratory system, like the lungs. The lungs is an organ. You can't breathe and you can't push or move the blood throughout your circulatory system or your venous system without the actual lungs. That's an organ. The digestive system, the dejulium, the ecum, the cecum valve, the transverse colon, the ascending, the descending colon, the anus, the rectum. This is all a part of an organ system that has structure and functionality. So your body have an organ that make up an organism, but these organisms that make up your entire body are made of cells. These cells are made of molecules and protons, neutrons and electrons. This cell has small things called organelles. Organelles meaning just mean small parts. And guess what? What these little organelles that make up your cells, which make up your body have the same exact reflection of the organs that make you up. So your cells have a heart. Your cells have a digestive system of their own. Your cells have a way to migrate and communicate with themselves. Your cells have a catalyst and, and enzymes and livers. Your cells have a digestive system called the lysosome. Your cells have a communication system called exosomes. Your cells actually have a bladder called the vesicle or the vacuo. Your cells have a backbone called the cytoplasma of the cells. Your cells have a nervous system called the K uh, plus channel ion gap, which is where you get a potassium pump from. So everything that you have in the macro your cells have in a micro you see that you see what i'm saying now check this out if you have to eat if you have to drink and hydrate the cells for you can have vitality for you can have energy to burn glucose and fructose and use that as fuel and gases for you can fire off ATP, adenosine triphosphate for energy for you can live your everyday life. Don't you have a byproduct that happens from that and you have to go urinate the liquids out and you have to go defecate the, mac the, the, the actual micro byproducts out called poop. So you got to poop and you have to pee, right? Don't show cells. If your cells are eating these micromolecules, don't they have to poop and pee? You see that? Now, I always talk about how you have the luxury of going to the bathroom. You have the luxury of getting up and walking to the bathroom and pooping in the toilet. Your cells don't have that. So what happens is when you eat in the macro, you eat these foods and you going through your digestive process. Once it passes the blood capillary bed and then it gets interjected into the blood, the blood then take all these phytonutrients like minerals, all these phytonutrients like triglycerides, all these phytonutrients like cholesterol. Cholesterol is not a bad thing. Cholesterol is a good lipid. You cannot have your, your brain cell, your neuron cells cannot fire off or carry a message without cholesterol. Your cells will not be protected if it wasn't for cholesterol. You couldn't produce or create sexual hormones if it wasn't for cholesterol. What you think make pregnenolone, progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone? What you think converts itself over to vitamin D? This is all coming from cholesterol. So we have to get rid of this cholesterol myth as well. They talking about uh, uh, HDL and LDL, which is is the transportation of cholesterol. They talking about lipoprotein. That's the bad part, the lipoprotein, because cholesterol can be big and then the transportation can be small and it gets stopped somewhere in the body where it ain't supposed to be. These are all myths and theories that no, nobody have proven this stuff. When I'm looking under the microscopes, when we in the laboratories, when I'm looking at people's blood and I'm doing live and dry blood analysis, when I'm looking at iridology readings, I'm looking at your eyes, when I'm seeing your blood work and we looking at these things and we healing people, everything that they say to be true seems to be a lie. And y'all talking about somebody that went to school for all this stuff, learned the lies and now is finally learning and teaching the truth. So when your cells eat, they don't have the capability of getting up and going to the bathroom. So what the cell does is the cell actually defecate on top of itself. Well, anytime you do something or anytime you spend energy, anytime you utilize energy, there is a byproduct for it. There is nothing inside of this world that got to just use energy and doesn't have to pay for it. So technically, there is no such thing as free energy. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. It's called cause and effect. This is one of the laws of nature. Same thing as if you put energy of fuel, which is food, in your car and you start that ignition, what is going to come out the tailpipe? Carbon dioxide, uh, carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. 
dioxide. Why is it coming out of the tailpipe? Because these are metabolic byproducts of the fuel that you are utilizing to drive yourself to point A to point B. Same thing if you put fuel or food inside of your body and you actually eat these things, they break down into these macros and micromolecules. It passes the blood capillary. The blood actually acts as a transport or a highway. Going, and then what happens is these macro and micromolecules bind themselves to hemoglobin and protein and the hemoglobin and protein act as a transportation system and it or Uber or uh, Uber Eats and it drops this food off to each individual door to give it all the groceries it needs to sustain itself. You get your groceries from the door, which is the sale. The sale then eat these things. And next thing you know, you got to go poop and pee it out. So the cells are pooping and peeing out things that you are eating. And instead of going to the bathroom, they go to the bathroom on top of themselves. Now, remember, these things turn into byproducts. These things turn into acidic waste. This is why I'm always speaking about metabolic acidosis. So now you have utilized poop and minerals. In food that you already ate. I'm talking about 150 trillion cells in your body. They poop on top of themselves. These things turn into acidic metabolic byproducts and it sits on top of the cells and these acids just start burning the cells. It just start burning the cells away. Now you have to remember your body is super smart. So the body is going to go through something called cellular mitosis. What cellular mitosis is, is when the cells and its lifespan can divide in so many different times to clean itself up, break and degrade itself down and reuse these recycled biological parts to rebuild another cell. That's what happens. So when the cells get poop on top of themselves, the lymphatic system supposed to come pick the poop off the cells, right? So the, the cell pooping. It just ate its pooping. It's pooping and it's peeing, right? Now, once it poops on itself, the lymphatic system or what they call the interstitium fluid of the body will sweep through over the cells and collect the poop. But the cell is already damaged and now it's starting to die. So in order for the cells to be recycled, the body will go through something called cellular mitosis. And this is when the cells is programmed to divide itself. As the cell is programmed to divide itself, the cell commits suicide. This is called control apoptosis. It's when the cell kills itself. Well, once the cell kills itself, it's something that's called cytolysis. And what cytolysis is when the cell breaks open, the cell will break open and then all of the parts that made up the cells is released into the stream, the bloodstream or into the system. And then you have certain macrophages that come pick up all of the cellular debris and recycle it to make a new cell out of, right? Now, what is a virus? Check this out, family. I just showed you a scientific way of what happens with the cells. So you go through something called automatic autophagy. Now, remember, auto means self whenever you're talking about the, 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 the medical industry. Phagy actually means consume. So when you look at the word autophagy or autophagy, it means a cell that self-consume itself. This is supposed to happen on a regular basis. You have 150 trillion cells in the body. Over 300 to 500 billion cells die every single day in your body. I've been on this live for about 25 minutes. I have already lost a million cells just from talking, just from experiencing. Spending energy and talking to y'all, I'm probably at about 200 million cells already that is constantly dying, breaking down and being reutilized, right? Going into the bloodstream, being reutilized and being repackaged, right? Now, check this out. As those cells die, there is something that have to come pick it up and, degre and degrade it and break it all the way down, right? It's called, it's called autophagy. Autophagy, y'all. Or what you would call autophagy. Auto means self. Phagy means consume. So when you look at the word autophagy, autophagy means a cell that eats itself. Now, let me show you all how viruses are made, because they will have y'all believe that viruses can be caught. You see that you got a virus because it was an evil spirit. It just jumped on you. You just brought it and smelt it and brought it in from the air. You, your immune system was weak. Your faith was weak. And since your faith or your immune system was weak, you was walking outside into the everyday world because you are part of the world. You see that? You can't be, you can't be of the world. You can be in the world, but not of it. Right. These are all terminologies that is based off religion. So if you in the world and you're not of the world and your faith is weak or your immune system is weak, you can catch particles. You can catch entities and evil spirits that will possess you. That possession is an infection. This infection needs to be cured or you need to find a medical doctor or a priest that can evict or exercise, perform an exorcism to get this virus or to get this evil entity and spirit up out of you. If not, it is going to deteriorate and kill your flesh or your body. 
Don't this sound just like church? Don't this sound just like the hospital? Don't this sound just like all these other terminologies? Because we're working in something you would call a illusion. The matrix. This all The matrix don't do new things. They take the same thing, replicate it, and put a different name on it. And you think it's different because you're full of indoctrination. And you don't know and understand your body. Now check this out. Where did a virus come from? All right, so sales. You have 150 trillion sales. 300 billion to 500 billion of those sales die every single 24 hours. That is a lot of sales that's dying. When these sales die, they burst open. Now, inside of the cells, all your cells have pressure. This is called Turgor pressure, T-U-R-G-O-R -R pressure. The nickname for it is hydrostatic pressure. So imagine having a cell that's a balloon and the cell have all these gases in it that's creating this environmental pressure in it, a combustion chamber. And then you're eating acids. Even if you're eating alkaline foods, most of your alkaline foods still live back, leave back certain minerals that's acidic like phosphorus. You can have an alkaline food, an alkaline forming food that still have a phosphorus, that still have a, a, a phosphorus left behind. That's still accordingly, it's still acidic. Even your alkaline food have to come with a balance of homeostasis of, uh, of uh, protons and electrons. Protons are more acidic on, on, on the electronic uh, spectrum. Electrons are more alkaline. That's why if you study biochemistry and you look at the axis, you will see the actual proton chasing the electron around this electrical magnetic spectrum trying to bar charge because it needs to neutralize itself. Same thing even with your alkaline forming foods. It still has something that's off in it. And if your body is off, you can even turn that alkaline food wrong. And that's the reason why a lot of people are getting the actual detoxification symptoms from eating all fruits. All fruits is not supposed to detoxify you like that. The reason why fruits are detoxifying you because you have a bunch of acids and metabolic waste built up in the body. So the fruits is being doing its job and is neutralizing all the protons or all the acidic waste and proteins and nitrogen that's built up with inside the system. If your system was already clean, you can eat fruits and gain weight. If your system was already clean, you can eat fruits and get a lot of energy from them. If your system was already clean, you can eat nothing but fruits and build muscle. You can have cognitive functionality. You can think better. You can be at more peace. But since you, your system is not clean and you've been eating the wrong food all your life because they've been, think, they've been telling you food is meats and proteins and dairy and all these other lies, the moment that you eat fruit, you are, it automatically throw you into a detoxification symptoms. You get fever. You get cough and flu-like symptoms. You start pooping everywhere. You're defecating. You're losing all these toxins so you're going to drop weight. You get adrenal fatigue. You feel tired. Your muscle starts to being sore and aching so you automatically look at the fruits like a bad thing or like it's turning your life upside down. No. The fruits are healing you before they're able to rebuild you. The fruits is going to heal and detox first. Then they're going to rebuild. That's what fruits does. That's why most clean people, look at Kylie Muscle right now. Kylie Muscle, he had his heart attack. You know, well, he attacked his heart, should I say, just like I attacked mine when I was 21. He got on his all mono fruit fast. He got on my herbs. He cleaned his body up. Now you seeing him lean and looking good, gooder than ever. His, his pecs is coming back. You see his muscles building back up, but he more on the lean side. So we seen him drop all that weight at first, but now we see his body is rebuilding itself off of nothing but fruits. He's a frugivore now. You see what I'm saying? So this shows you. And it's many other brothers that I can name this body's going through the same thing and doing the same thing. It's just I know Kali Muscle. Everybody know him. So that, that's the reason why I'm using his name. So we have to get out of the indoctrination. Back to the viruses because I'm going somewhere with this, right? So when your cells go through this and they poop on themselves and the lymphatic system is stagnant and the system lymph and only thing that stagnates the lymphatic system is bad kidneys. And what messes up kidney functionality that's keep the nephrons from filtering and making urea and making all the creatine and the cre everything that you need to get out of the body is proteins. Proteins from meat consumption, proteins from dairy products. Proteins is very acidic because it's made of complex amino acid structures. That it means many acids. Some of these things can get up into 2,000 different types of acids in one protein. That's a lot of acids that you cannot degrade and break down. Another thing is these high saccharides, these polysaccharide sugars that you're not supposed to be eating because the body can't ferment them because they're too complex and it's in a hydrogen lock bond. The body can't even break it down. 
Another thing is being in wrong, toxic environments. Another thing is letting these people stick things into your arms, saying that they're trying to give you, build up antibodies to combat something. All these things bring a high level of toxicity to the cells. This stagnates the kidneys. Once the kidneys and the nephrons turn to nephritis because they are inflamed, because it's trying to pass all this metabolic micro waste when it only can pass bound degraded, uh, I mean, macro waste, when it only can pass degraded micro waste, they stop working. They slow down. Once they slow down, it backs up interstitially inside the body. So now you have stagnant lymph, intracellular, extracellular fluid in the body that's not picking up none of these toxins. So the toxins just sit inside the fluid and literally taint and contaminate the fluid that's around your cells and it contaminates the cells. The body going to go haywire. So once the body go haywire because it's metabolic acidosis setting in, the metabolic acidosis sits on the cell. And it sits on a cell and it just burn and burn and burn through the cell. Once it burns to the cell, you remember you have something called hydrostatic pressure in the cell. Hydrostatic pressure is already making the cell look like a balloon, keeping the integrity and the structure of the cell together. Once the acid burns to the cytoplasma, it pops. Boom. Now, look inside this cell. Of course, it's a virus, but I don't have my cell here at this, uh, at this location I'm at, so I got to use a virus cell. So notice once it pops all of the DNA. The genomes pop and birth for going to the cell. All of the mitochondria that was in the cell, it trajects itself into the cell. All of the information that remakes the cell trajects itself in the cell. Then deep inside the cell, you have something called the nucleus of the cell. The nucleus of the cells is one of the most important organelles of the cell because it's the nucleus. And, and look, if you keep thinking, nucleus come from the word new sun. Nucleus, new sun. And notice the nucleus is always shaped like a sun in the middle of what they would call the round global earth. It's still going back to sun gods. It's still going back to paganism, even starting to talk about the terminology and the names of the cells on the microbiology level. We are still serving other gods by using these names. See, this, this shit is psychological, y'all. Y'all don't even know how deep this stuff really runs. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't really know how, to, and the reason why I don't speak on it too much, cause I be sounding crazy as hell up here. But anyways, when the, when this tagar or this hydrostatic pressure, because this, the cellular mechanism is penetrated or ate through or degraded or de, or decaying because the acids are sitting on it, because you are eating foods and you're not worried about kidney filtration. You're not worried.